Hey guys, I want to show you something that I think is really, really cool. Just something that uh, I haven't seen before. This is the first uh, knife of its kind, and uh, I'm, I'm proud to, to kind of bring it to you guys, um, and I'll tell the story on how I got it. Uh, but first of all, I want to start by saying I, I'm a huge fan of Stan Wilson. I mean, I think that uh, pretty much Stan is my favorite knife maker, in my opinion, ever. Um, I know knives can be very personal, very much like art, but, you know, I am a mechanical junkie. I love the fact uh, that knives are, are simple machines, basically, especially flippers. I don't really collect a lot of uh, um, fixed blades because I really enjoy how they're put together. I know they're very, very simple, and it's something that I can take apart, work on if I need to. Um, but when I fell in love with the non-flipper flipper, one of the reasons why I fell in love with it is just... It, it combined the uh, mechanically perfect aspect with the artistic aspect, which I think Stan is just brilliant as far as, uh, you know, his designs. Um, I do have a couple of other designs that uh, models that he's made, and I think they're all absolutely amazing. And uh, also Stan makes them completely by hand, and that's something that I really appreciate and I enjoy and I and I love as well. So uh, kind of Stan fulfills those um uh, those criteria that I'm looking for. And not only that, I've had uh, a handful of conversations with him and he's just a great dude. I consider him a friend and he's someone that, um, you know, if, if he lets you into the, uh, the, the inner workings of the mind there, I mean, um, man, it, he's, he's got a fascinating uh, uh, thought process and uh, that's kind of how he creates what I consider to be absolutely genius uh, knives. Um, one of the downsides of that is that he can only do so so much. Um, you know, him and I have spoken about the fact that we'd like to, or he would like to, and I would like to, um, you know, bring a non-flipper flipper to people who want them that didn't take, you know, weeks and weeks to build and only one person building them. Um, you know, I appreciate the model so much. I, I, I wish everybody can, uh, you know, uh, handle one, have one if they want to own one. And, um, you know, so that's kind of a downside of, of just kind of his amazing knives. They just take him so long to build and, and he's such a perfectionist, but that's why we get such amazing things. So let me just show you, this is uh, the non-flipper flipper that I carry. Um, this is the one that I know the best because it's in my pocket quite a bit. Uh, I put on all of these little nicks and marks, and I'm proud of them. Uh, I do own three non-flipper flippers, so um, but this is the one that uh, you know I will use and will come to work with me. So fast forward, um, you know I'm doing research on the non-flipper flipper, and I see a gentleman who also basically um, you know. Uh, think Stan is one of the best knife makers out there. Um, but the difference is this person basically knows how to work with metal um, and is going to try to emulate it. And I'll be honest with you, I do the exact same thing if I had any skill whatsoever. In fact, I call Stan and I tell him some ideas. And, you know, unfortunately, he's already thought of these ideas much deeper than I've thought of them. Um, but I just don't have the skill to actually put any of my ideas uh, or the things that I want to do into place. And um, the gentleman who I'm talking about, his name is Stefano Nardelli. He's an Italian and, you know, he, he's not a knife maker. So he's a helicopter pilot by profession, but he builds, he works with metal, does engravings, does those things uh, basically as a measure of, uh, you know, as a hobby and, and just kind of just to, uh, you know, uh, relax, relax his mind. And so, um, he's gotten quite good at it from what I've seen, uh, on his Facebook. And I, I reach out to him and we talk about Stan and, um, he talks about, um, you know, he's going to make an attempt at building a non flipper flipper, which I think is absolutely insane because, um, there are knife makers out there and I'm talking high end, top quality, top of the line that, I would say, you know, I know it stands intellectual property and it's his kind of, you know, his creation and his baby, but I would say wouldn't even try to build one just for the complexity, the time it takes, the, um, you know, I, I would just say that there's probably not a lot of people that would actually set a, set out to try to copy something that's, um, you know, quite frankly, in my opinion, genius. So Stefano's done that. He actually uh, has is building a series of knives um, to kind of get better, learn, and kind of do some things. So, um, you know, 
one of the things that he wanted to do is he wanted to get to a spot where he can engrave the knife. And therefore, it was important to him to not have any uh, hardware. So you'll see the knife in a second. This is uh, these are hardwares for the um, the scales here, and of course this is the pivot hardware. And, and actually, um, ironically, um, when he had that idea, I actually spoke to Stan, um, you know, and I let him know that I'm talking to someone who's who's gonna you know try to copy his work, and he was okay with it. He's he's totally awesome, and he was like, hey, uh, if he can do it, he that's awesome. I'm I'm curious to to see if he can pull it off. But he's like, he's not gonna be able to get that uh, bolster release, and um, it's pretty funny because you know months later, uh, Stefano really built a really nice knife, but uh, he uh, um, he didn't get the bolster release uh, right away. But uh, he's working on a series of knives, so he's working on a alternative to what you see. But this is the first one he's produced, and the the guy is awesome. Um, you know, just kind of talking with him, um, uh, telling him that I appreciate him showing me uh, his his build videos and kind of me uh, kind of asking him questions. He said uh, when he had it built up, hey, you want to take a look? I'll send it to you. And, uh, you know, I told him I really wanted to take it apart. He goes, I'll send you the tools and you're welcome to take it apart. And that's one thing I've never done with my Stan Wilson knives, kind of out of respect for Stan. Um, I, I asked him if I could uh, take it down. He actually sent me the tools to do some minor adjustments and cleaning, but I've never taken his uh, uh, knife down to the screws. And... Um, he recommended me not doing it, and I respect what he says, but Stefano was, hey, man, you want to take it down? Um, you knock yourself out and tell me what you think. So uh, let's take a look at Stefano's work. So first of all, it comes in this beautiful case. I mean, I'm again, I, I'm not sure you know what kind of stress he's under, but uh, if, if this is his stress relief making like top quality, high-end uh, handmade stuff, then wow, you know, uh, I'm stressed out just – you know, thinking of him making it, but I guess that is his, uh, that's his hobby and that's what he wants to do. He made this certificate of authenticity. You can see here, Stefano Nardelli is his name. Again, he's a helicopter pilot for the uh, Italian uh, um, uh, military, I believe. Uh, so he named this after the Comanche AH-66 helicopter. Um, he calls it the Hiven Pivot Flipping Bolster. He credits Stan the whole way through. So he acknowledges that the uh, bolster flipper was Stan's idea. Um, and he just wanted to do something so that he could uh, engrave himself and kind of do something just a little bit different. The blade is uh, RWL 34. The handle here is uh, stainless steel, which is the bolster. And then the micarta is on the scales. And uh, this is uh, just in, so you can see, 5 of 2018. So let's take a look at what he sent me. Again, this leather case is really, really nice presentation. Everything is fantastic here. Um, here, this is the knife, and I'll show you that. He included this little beautiful little uh, accessory bottle here, a little cork in it. Those are some extra screws in case they strip. And those are a couple of uh, ball bearings uh, because the way he did it with the hidden pivot, hidden pivot system is. Uh, uh, they're held in with the ball bearing, so when you take the knife apart, that ball bearing is free. And, um, you know, I, I took this knife apart a few times, but I didn't lose it, but he uh, included it just in case I did. This is the tool to take off the uh, hidden hardware um, scales. Uh, Stan actually made me something very similar to that for my non-flipper flipper. And we have just a standard T6. But, I mean, check out the packaging. Absolutely amazing. He even put his uh, own little logo on there. I mean... Unbelievable, unbelievable craftsmanship here. All right, let's take a look at the knife here. As you can see, let's just compare it to the non-flipper flipper. It's quite a bit smaller. So it kind of reminds me of more of a, you know, like a slip joint or something that, uh, it, you know, is more of a gentleman's carry. You can see that this does not have a pocket clip, whereas the Stan Wilson knife does have a pocket clip. So I consider this more of a tactical knife. Obviously, it's more of a, a tactical, um, uh, you know, dress options here um uh, my card is is not too fancy but i mean this uh it's it's a full mirror polisher almost a full mirror polish on the bolsters um and so it picks up fingerprints it's just probably not something that you want to use in a tactical environment but uh so i consider this kind of my first gentleman's slip joint type knife um that i've been able to uh, get my hands on because i don't normally collect those but they're very nice they're very interesting so um just quickly, uh, if you're not familiar with the non-flipper flipper, there's the bolster flipper and the release is up here and you just rotate this uh, the opposite direction and it closes up and it's 
quite frankly, just an amazing knife. But at the end of the day, all it is is just a brilliant system on top of a standard lockback. And you can see uh, when I press this down here, it uh, raises the uh, um, lock bar, and that's what uh, will unlock the knife. Well, as I said, Stefano, uh, his uh, – oh, I'll just do it this way. Uh, his goal was to do a knife that he can get engraved. So this is basically a prototype, and he actually calls me his beta tester. So um, he didn't want to put any of that uh, hardware on there, so he actually did, did a little bit of a different design, and he knocked it out of the park. It flips fantastic. You can see here the, uh, the grind of this. It's kind of really hard to pick up with the uh, just the incredible shiny pivots or uh, shiny bolsters. And I'm sorry, they just pick up fingerprints. That's just what... Uh, what it's going to happen here. Um, I'll clean them off a little bit uh, periodically, but uh, this knife just picks up fingerprints like crazy. But you can see that instead of um, this bolster being able to rotate, uh, he just put a standard lock back here. So let me just open it up. Just put your thumb back here and roll it down. You can see the knife unlock. And one of the things that uh, is a little bit scary about this knife is that it is a completely drop free action. Now let me just do it here with two hands so uh, I can show you. And it's kind of vertical, and I'm just going to flip it and flip it. I mean, this knife is completely drop-free. Um, and the lockup is insane. I mean, it's solid. There's no play. Um, I'm not really quite sure how he did that. Now, the Stan Wilson non-flipper flipper is also fairly drop-free, but it hits a certain point where it's, you know, it because of the way he's engineered this up here um it's got to go back into the uh into battery basically it's it it'll drop but it won't drop all the way closed so this knife here is completely drop free um i've handled a grimsmo and it's pretty much the same thing and that's absolutely incredible because this is a very small skinny blade it's not heavy at all it doesn't have all the weight at the end like a groomsmo so uh for those of you who like uh, drop free knives you'll love this but i guarantee you'll, you'll probably end up cutting yourself at some point there's definitely a technique to it uh you slide your finger up here so it hits the top of your finger it's only sharpened till about here so you got to put your finger to catch it break it and then move your fingers and just roll the knife over but if you drop it like this and you're up in a vertical position, it will come down, it will cut you, because um, this knife came pretty sharp. So that's one of the negatives of the system. Um, you know, just kind of, I'm pretty good at it now, but it definitely takes some technique. So, and as you can see, the action of this knife is fantastic. So I am not uh, sure if he's going to get them all like that. I know uh, with hand-built stuff, um, you know, the actions can definitely vary. But a couple things to point out, I took this knife apart twice now. Completely take it, you know, took it apart. That's why I got it. That's why he sent it to me. I asked him to check it out. He's, he, like I said, um, unbelievable. He just, he just mails it to me. He doesn't, he says, hey, here you go. You can take a look. And, uh, you know, if you want to add it to your collection later, we can talk about it. But, um, you know, I just want you to check it out. And again, I'm not a knife maker, but, uh, you know, you appreciate this stuff and here you go. And I will tell you, um, while I still think Stan Wilson is by far the best knife maker I've ever experienced as far as tolerances, fit and finish, uh, this is absolutely incredible fit and finish, especially for the first of its kind. Um, and like I said, he doesn't do this uh, as anything else but a hobby. Uh, the fit and finish is unbelievable. I mean, if you actually said Stan Wilson built this knife, um, you'd probably say he was pretty tired when he built it, but it would pass for a Stan Wilson. And the only reason why I say that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, is Stan just has incredible tolerances where um, you can see the blade here. Just to, uh, you know, it, it, These are good tolerances. These are great tolerances. These will pass for a hand-built custom any day, but the Stan Wilson stuff is just absolutely incredible just tough, you know centered and you know everything is perfect with stan wilson maybe maybe it's just a measure of you know i've, I've spoken with him he won't let it out of his uh, shop unless it's absolutely dead perfect um and that's not to say this knife if if you were to tell me this knife was absolutely dead perfect i would say 100 percent it is uh so this is a an amazing knife from a person who doesn't build these for a living um you know, the only thing that I can think of is uh, the guy's the guy's a prodigy, right? Um, now I did see some um, 
video of him building this. So he knows his way around the machine shop. You can just tell me that he wanted to just build a knife all of a sudden and, and starts making this. I mean, the guy, uh, he jeweled the liners. He jeweled everything. I mean, the guy knew what he was doing. So it's not like I decided to make a knife and this is what I came up with. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Stefano, um, you know, had had experience making things, whether knives or not. He had experience making something. Action is perfect. Um, again, the the tolerances in here are absolutely amazing. The tolerances in the action are amazing. I took this thing apart, put it back together. It went back together perfectly. No no issues whatsoever. So um, we'll do another little quick uh, quick run around. Excuse me there, and uh, and then that's about it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. But I do think. I don't want to send this back. This is going to be something that I own. So we're going to call Stefano. Let's see what we can do here. Great. But once again, um, I appreciate you guys watching. I think he's done the master proud. Um, you know, I know that, uh, um, to emulate someone is the greatest form of flattery, but, uh, you know, he's, it, this is not a poor attempt at it. This is a really good knife and he's done a great job and, uh, he, really, really fun, fun knife. And I'm just, you know, we, we should take a bet how long it's going to take me to cut myself because I'm guessing it won't be too terribly long. So, all right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye-bye.